Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grace College and Seminary. At this time, we request that you please rise for the presentation of the colors. The colors will be presented by the American Legion, post 49 from Warsaw, Indiana. Please remain standing in silence until the flags of the United States of America and the state of Indiana have been posted. Thank you. You may be seated.
Welcome to the 2022 commencement of Grace College and Seminary. You may be seated. This is the second of two commencement celebrations Grace is conducting today. This afternoon, we are pleased to honor graduates from the School of Business, School of Ministry Studies, School of Professional and Online Education, and Grace Theological Seminary. We will also honor our nursing graduates. Nursing is a partnership program between Bethel University and Grace College School of Arts and Sciences. These students graduated from Bethel this morning and are joining their Grace family to celebrate here this afternoon. I want to welcome all parents, guardians, grandparents, spouses, family members, and friends. We are not taking your presence or our opportunity to gather here together for granted. We are delighted that you are here or joining us online as our guests. Thank you for participating in this special event in the life of these graduates and our campus community. Commencement at Grace is both a formal ceremony to celebrate our graduates' accomplishments, and it is a worship service. Above everything else, we gather here together to thank God for his kindness and goodness. In addition to distributing honors and diplomas, we will also spend time singing, praying, reflecting, and learning all in worship to Jesus. As Dean of Students here at Grace, it is my special privilege to welcome our graduates to this celebration. All of today's graduates, as students and now alumni, have contributed to Grace College in unique ways, in the classroom, on the athletic field, in original research or online discussion boards, in the residence halls and dining halls. You have added your voice to the conversations, your insight to class disc discourse, and your personality to our campus culture. Grace is different and better because of the investment you have made here. Thank you for participating in this ceremony and for giving us, your faculty, staff, and administrators, the opportunity to honor your achievements. Today's graduating class features a number of students earning both an undergraduate and graduate degree simultaneously from Grace. Many additional students who are receiving their undergraduate degrees today have already begun work on a master's degree and will be finishing their graduate or seminary degree next year. At Grace, we refer to these as blended students. Congratulations to each of our blended students for your extra time and effort spent pursuing two degrees at the same time. This year's campus theme was Follow Me. And throughout this year, we read and studied the gospel according to Matthew. It is always good when we take a year focused on the life of Jesus. And this year, we particularly looked at the ways Jesus' words, values, and example impacts our lives. We asked important questions like, what does following Jesus require of me? And what does it look like to love God and others like Jesus does? These are important questions of calling. This two-word sentence, follow me, is the simplest expression of Jesus' invitation, his call to each of us. It is an invitation to relationship with him as leader and Lord. It is an invitation to orient our lives in all our vocations, to align our values and priorities to his. And it is an invitation to join him in sharing God's good news of salvation, freedom, reconciliation, and hope with the rest of the world. Isn't it amazing that we serve a God who is inviting? That God loved us so much that he came to earth as one of us, that he reveals himself to us, that he seeks out a relationship with us, and he invites us to follow him as we navigate the complexities of life. Throughout this year, I have come to see Follow Me as an opportunity and a challenge. The opportunity is to join Jesus in a transformational relationship. And graduates, I pray that in your time at Grace, whether you're an undergraduate young adult or an adult student pursuing an advanced credential, I pray that you have pondered Jesus' invitation to follow him in every 
aspect of your life. The challenge is to follow him well. As you leave this chapter of your life to pursue varied vocations and professions, I hope that you are challenged by Jesus' invitation in Matthew 16 to deny yourself with humility, to take up your cross with courage, and to follow him. Grace graduates, whatever you do in this life, do it well as a follower of Jesus. I'd now like to invite Dr. Tim Zebarth to welcome you on behalf of the faculty and to lead us in our invocation. Dr. Zebarth is the Dean of the School of Professional and Online Education and also serves as registrar. Tim is completing his 20th year at Grace. It's a true honor and privilege to be with you this afternoon to celebrate the class of 2022. I know there's a lot of proud parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, employers, co-workers, and more in attendance today. You see, today marks a special day for me because I'm a proud dad as well. My daughter Morgan is part of the class of this uh, class of 2022, and I know Grandpa Zebarth up in heaven is very proud of her. I know for many of you, it seems like yesterday that we're dropping these kids off to first grade, and now we're here today. These are one of those days we wish that time would just slow down just a little bit. I hope today that you'll find an extra renewed sense of spirit and celebration. What a wonderful accomplishment to earn a college or seminary degree. We know that God is not done with your journey in this thing called life that he has prepared you to do. On behalf of the faculty, staff, deans, and the School of Business, School of Ministry Studies, the School of Professional and Online Education, thanks for allowing us to be a small portion of your lives as we attempted to train you in the competencies of your discipline, grounded in biblical values and developing your character, and creating opportunities to serve others. Please stand. After our invocation, after I pray, remain standing the singing of our national anthem. Father, your word tells us today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we re rejoice and celebrate for these graduates and families. We rejoice over the last several years that you found a way for them to earn their degrees. You found a way for students in high school to earn their diploma along with a Grace College degree. You found a way for Ohio students that wanted to stay in Akron and serve there in ministry. You found a way for our adult online students who balance life, work, family, and careers. You found a way for our blended students to earn both a bachelor's and master's degree. You found a way for all of our traditional undergraduate students to actually be here on campus. Thanks for finding a way for all these students. You are welcomed in this place and in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. Please be seated. And thank you, Dr. Zebart, for that uh, fine prayer. Well, good afternoon. My name is John T. Van, Dr. John T. Van. It has been my honor this semester, short time, to serve as interim president of Grace. This six-month interim assignment includes the humbling opportunity to preside over this weekend's commencement activities, and I'm pleased to do it. I would like to add uh, my welcome to our graduates and guests and make several introductions, and I mean several introductions and special welcomes. Are you well seated? Good. First, and this is foremost, I want to acknowledge the absence of Dr. Bill Cadip, who most of our uh, graduates know, knew and know as uh, president. I wish you were here today to hand you to your diplomas and shake your hand to lead this ceremony. At, this, at one point this year, he had announced his retirement would come just after this year's commencement activities. But as most of you know, Dr. Cadip suffered a significant stroke in October. While he was recovering and regaining his strength, he was unable to continue as president and announced his early retirement in December. I've spoken with Bill the last few months and want to convey his congratulations and prayers for each one of you. Undoubtedly, his message and challenge to you graduates today would be from Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, a verse he shared often uh, when he spoke. Have, I, have not I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Dr. Kadip was a student-centered president. He was the first president of Grace, who was also a graduate of Grace College. He loved attending great sporting events, cabinet activities, and meeting with students. He was our president for nine years at Grace and served six more before that as provost. That's when I worked most closely with him when I was uh, in the uh, prison extension in Indiana. Under his presidency, Grace College and Seminary grew in size and in reputation. He oversaw significant improvements to the Grace experience, which included many new facilities, programs, and faculty. You can see many of the specific improvements Dr. Cadip led during his presidency in the history timeline that's in the back of your program in front of you. His retirement in December concluded an unprecedented career in higher education that spanned over 40 years of innovative and God-honoring service. While he's unable to be here uh, this, this, evening, this afternoon, he is watching on the live stream, and I hope you'll join me in celebrating Dr. Kadip's incredible presidency with our applause. Thank you, Bill. Grace College and Seminary is completing its 85th year. Grace Theological Seminary was founded in 1937 in Akron, Ohio, relocated to Winona Lake two years later, and Grace College began in 1948. The mission of Grace, you've heard this before, I hope you can almost say it with me, is to be a Christ-centered community of higher education applying biblical values in strengthening character, sharpening competence, and preparing for service. Our mission is beautifully reflected today by the ceremonial mace. The design elements of the mace highlight the words of the institution's mission. The flame on top symbolizes the refining character. Uh, the flame rests on an open Bible, the foundation of wisdom and competence and truth, and suspended below the Bible is a globe symbolizing worldwide reach and service. The institutional seal, which refers to Ephesians 2, 8 and through 10, and a cross are affixed to the staff itself. This afternoon, the mace was carried very ably by Dr. Rick Kuntz. Rick has served Grace College and Seminary for 24 years in the School of Business. He's taught a wide variety of information systems courses, advised hundreds of students, served on several faculty-led committees, and has served as the NAIA faculty representative for Grace Athletics for several seasons. Currently, Dr. Kuntz serves as Professor of Information Systems, Chair for the Business Department, and is highly respected for skills around the chessboard. Not bad. <laughs> Dr. Kuntz received his BA in Computer Science and Business Administration here at Grace College and his Doctorate of Business Administration in Management from Anderson University. 
He's been married to his wife, Tammy, for 34 years, and they have one son, Kenneth. Both Tammy and Kenneth are also Grace College graduates. Thank you, Rick, for your excellent work and faithful service to Grace College and Seminary. Thanks for honoring your colleagues and graduates by carrying the symbolic mace. Your impact on, the students, on student success and your commitment to mission is greatly appreciated. Also joining the faculty, administrators, and me on the platform today are members of Grace College and Seminary Board of Trustees. Members of our board faithfully serve our Lord and Grace College and Seminary with their time, talent, and treasures. This afternoon, we have uh, three board members with us, Janine Zeltwanger, Bob Bishop, and Butch Shook. Thank you for being here today. Would you please stand to be recognized? We're also happy to have one of our former presidents uh, here. Dr. John Davis served as Grace's fourth president and was a faculty member of the college and seminary both before and after his presidency. Dr. Davis, would you please stand so we can recognize you. <laughs> While much of this ceremony is a celebration and reflection upon the past, I would be remiss not to also acknowledge the bright future we anticipate for Grace College and Seminary, because also on the stage is our incoming president, Dr. Drew Flam. Drew has served nine years at Grace as vice president and executive vice president, overseeing advancement, admissions, marketing, and strategic planning. He was chosen this spring by our board of trustees to become Grace's seventh president. President Flam, get used to it, will begin his new responsibilities on July 1st, and we look forward to celebrating uh, his inauguration together this fall. Please join me in congratulating Income Grace President Dr. Drew Flam. <laughs> this year we're continuing a tradition of having commencement speaker whom the graduates themselves have chosen from the faculty of these three schools. Again this year, you have chosen well. For the past 17 years, Dr. Tiberius Ratza has served the Grace community well. He is currently our Associate Dean for the School of Ministry Studies and Grace Seminary, and also a gifted professor of Old Testament. Dr. Ratza earned his bachelor's degree in urban and regional planning and his master's in biblical languages. In 2003, Tiberius was awarded his PhD in Old Testament from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. Since then, he's been sharing wisdom with and caring for our students. Dr. Ratz has traveled to and supported many churches in our region as a visiting preacher and teacher and has served as an interim pastor. In addition to teaching and preaching, Tiberius finds time to research and publish. He's authored books on Jeremiah, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Ecclesiastes, and Proverbs coming up. He has also written numerous journal articles, books, book chapters, and book reviews. He's a dedicated and respected instructor who exhibits care for the students. A student added, here's a quote, Dr. Ratza values truth, humor, and excellence. He values each student in a congenial manner, but also does not fail to set a standard of excellent, excellence that pushes me, he wrote, to excel. I greatly appreciate his commitment to biblical truth and living according to it daily. Dr. Ratza is also famous for skills he shares outside of the class, a gifted musician, world-class travel guide, and his ping-pong skills are unmatched on the campus. He's been married to his wife, Carmen, for 25 years. They have two sons, Nick and Tim. Nick is a current Grace student, and Tim was a graduate of the class of, uh, of 2021. Dr. Ratza, thank you for your commitment and to engaging and training uh, students and the local church. Thank you for your many years of service at Grace College and Seminary. We look forward to hearing from you later in the service. And we're here from, we're here from student uh, Jalen Williams also. Finally, I want to finally, I want to mention uh, that we've had a special, this morning earlier, we had a special group of alumni joining us, members of the class of 1972. That goes back a ways. Uh, return to campus to share memories, take pictures, see how the campus has grown and changed. 
and had a nice dinner together. Important to me because 50 years ago I graduated uh, from the seminary here as well. We call this group Golden Grads and we were honored with their presence. You can see a list of Golden Grads in your program. Graduates, I'd encourage each of you, save the date, put it on your phone, May 2072 will be your Golden Grad <laughs> reunion. Yeah, it does sound crazy. Yeah, it does. Well, we look forward to seeing you then, some of us will, and hopefully many times before. Now we can proceed with the order of service as printed in your program, Assistant Professor of Worship Arts, Dr. Walter Brath will lead us in our traditional commencement hymn, Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Would you please stand with me? Everybody. 
My name is Kennedy Parker, and I am a fourth year senior graduating with a degree in educational ministry with a minor in worship arts. And I am one of the aforementioned blended students, and I will be finishing um, my Master's of Divinity and Exegetical Studies next year around this time. In my time at Grace, I have had the opportunity to be our student chapel band coordinator for the last couple years, and a student ambassador and a growth group leader. Classmates, it is a joy and an honor to be with you today. If you haven't heard it enough, congratulations. You have done a lot of work to get here, but I want you to remember that you are more than your credentials, your grades, and the things that warrant a life update. May you sense the gravity of this moment and recognize that this is not just about your diploma. This is about everything that you have accomplished both inside and outside of the classroom. I hope that you feel a sense of achievement for the things that aren't on your diploma just as much as for the things that are. I hope that you feel proud of the introspection that you worked hard for through your years at Grace. I hope you feel proud of the conflicts that you navigated. I hope you feel proud of the questions that you wrestled with. And I hope you feel proud of the times where you saw your own weakness in new ways. I hope you feel proud of the moments of brokenness that happened while you were earning this diploma. I hope you know that God sees all of those moments as well. And I believe that he is proud of you, and I hope that you are proud of you too. I entered college freshly graduated from high school and freshly called into ministry. I knew that Grace had a three-year bachelor's program and some different master's programs, so I decided to pursue a master's degree as well. I remember walking into my very first advising meeting with Dr. Christy Hill, where I very earnestly asked her if women were allowed to attend seminary. I explained how the Lord had called me into ministry, and I did this because I was still deeply unsure of myself, and I felt that if I at least explained my story and basically said that God told me so, maybe I wouldn't be questioned or have to feel too insecure about the fact that I believed God wanted me to be a pastor. Long story short, after asking if women were allowed to go to seminary, they are, um, I wound up meeting with John Sloat and joining the five-year blended Masters of Divinity program. I have been formed over the last four years by the people who God placed in my path at Grace. I would not be the person that I am today if not for the people who God placed in my life here. To those who saw something in me and leaned in, thank you. To those who trusted me when I felt I couldn't yet trust myself, thank you. To those who saw me and allowed me to see them, thank you. To those who took me in when I was unprepared and insecure and shared their wisdom and experience with me. To our chapel band leader, Kyle Brenneman, whose mentoring equipped me to grow into my passions. To Brent, our Dean of Chapel, who so gently interrupts me and says, you're prefacing or calls me out when I'm speaking out of insecurity and seeking reassurance from others instead of Christ. To John Sloat, who first warned me about the boys club I was entering into and who wound up introducing me to the best group of friends that I could ask for, thank you. To my friends who shared their mental health battles with me and held me as I navigated my own, I could never thank you enough to those who invited me to take risks and encouraged me to keep going whether or not those risks were successful, thank you. To the professors who asked tough questions and gave me the space to ask my own, thank you. To those who trusted me with responsibilities and equipped me to follow through with them, thank you. And to those who affirmed my character more than my performance, thank you. As much as I know the people of Grace College have impacted and inspired all of us, it is clear that we did not arrive here on our own. To the moms, the dads, the cousins, the mentors, the grandparents, the siblings, the guardians. To those who walked before us and alongside us. To those who raised us, shaped us, taught us how to tie our shoes. To those who answered the late night phone calls and helped with the chaos of packing up all our belongings as soon as our finals were done. Thanks, Mom. Graduates, please join me in thanking those who have supported us on our journey. It is clear that we would not be who we are without you. 
1 Corinthians 15.10 says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. It is first and foremost by God's grace that I am who I am, and it is the people of Grace College that have been the catalysts of that in my life over the last four years. I have learned that God is kinder than I could have hoped and gentler than I would have imagined on my own. He is worth knowing, and so are you. Congratulations, class of 2022. It is an honor to walk this path with you today. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Steely, and I'm graduating with an undergraduate accounting and management degree, as well as a Master of Business Administration. I have had the wonderful opportunity to participate in the blended program here at Grace and would like to thank Dr. Tvan, Dr. Kadip, and the rest of the faculty here with us for creating an edifying experiential learning environment. In the past four years, I've learned a little something I'd like to share with you all today. Instant results. You see them everywhere. On television, on social media, in videos. People snap their fingers and something happens. Transformation, overnight success, fame and fortune. I'm here to tell you that, uh, that success does not happen overnight. Hard work, dedication, persistence, and perseverance are all required to achieve anything great. In real life, there's no video editing, no TV magic. Theodore Roosevelt once said, nothing worth having comes easy. If you want to achieve great results, you'll have to put forth great effort. Success does not happen overnight. All the graduates sitting here know that college is not a one-day endeavor. You see a picture of a person on their first day of college or a master's degree program alongside a picture of that same person at graduation. But what you don't see is the years of hard work, the hours of studying, the days of exams and papers. Those who are successful are putting in the work day in and day out. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard students say, I just don't feel motivated, or I have no motivation. But I want to let you in on a little secret. You can control your motivation. You don't have to wait until you feel motivated to accomplish great results. You can take action, and the feelings will follow. This little known fact has been studied by researchers all over the world. And to prove this phenomenon to you, I'd like to have us try a little experiment. I want all of you to start smiling. Yes, even those of you who are watching online. We're going to smile for the next several minutes and see if you feel just a little bit happier. We are not changing any of your circumstances. We are not changing your income level or any of your relationships. We are simply taking action and observing the feelings that follow. If you, if you don't feel like smiling, do it anyway. You can fake it. The experiment will still work. Now look around you. Do you see all these smiling, happy people in this first-rate facility with all these joyful graduates who are delighted to be finishing their education? Do you see your family and friends smiling too? Now, if you don't feel any happier yet, that's all right. Keep smiling anyway. You might need a few extra minutes. It's nearly impossible to smile for five straight minutes and still feel miserable. Action precedes feeling. An old English proverb says, when the times get tough, the tough get going. Set your goals high and work tirelessly to achieve them. You can be successful in anything you choose if you are willing to put in continuous effort until you reach your goals. Feelings follow action, so if you feel discouraged, start smiling. The world will soon start to look a little bit brighter. Thank you for celebrating with us today. We appreciate the support and encouragement that was given to us by our families, friends, and colleagues as we pursued our graduate degrees. Graduates, can we give a round of applause to show our appreciation to all those who have supported us in this journey? Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, Kennedy. I do feel happier. That's good. <laughs> My name is Wally Brath, and I am the program director and professor for worship arts here at Grace College. 
I love being able to prepare students musically and the theologically in anticipation for how get God may want to use them in worship ministry and music production. Now that things are opening up a little bit more for travel, I, along with some other worship arts faculty, will lead the Lancer Chorus, a guitar ensemble, and a worship team to France for a 10-day music missions tour. We will be working with Encompass World Partners in France to bring the gospel there through area churches with music. Will you pray with me that God will give this, these students a vision for how he is drawing the nations to himself through the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's not uncommon for God to call some students into overseas music ministry as a result of these trips. We would like to share a song with you now entitled, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery, written by Matt Boswell and Matt Papa. Following that piece, we will sing a song that is Ukraine's spiritual national anthem, much like Amazing Grace is for us here in the US. During this Ukrainian hymn, would you take time to silently pray for gospel peace to reign in the Ukraine and Russia. Some of the lyrics of this sung prayer say, Lord, the great and almighty, protect our beloved Ukraine. Bless her with freedom and light. Grant our people and country all your kindness and grace. See the true and the 
Back in 1965, the British rock band The Rolling Stones deputed a song that quickly shot to number one in the charts because it represented the reality that sex, drugs, and rock and roll will not give lasting meaning and satisfaction. It went something like this. I can get no satisfaction. I can get no satisfaction because I try and I try and I try. I can't get no, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> 3,000 years earlier than that, that was Solomon's end of life refrain as recorded in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11, when he wrote, when I surveyed all that my hands had done, and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. But in order to understand what Solomon is saying, we have to understand his rise and his fall. You see, the Bible says that God appeared to Solomon not once but twice. First Kings 3, 5 says that Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon asks for the right thing. He prays, give your heart therefore an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil and who is able to govern this your great people. And God answers Solomon's prayer and because of that his resume sounds very impressive. Listen what 1 Kings 4.29 says about Solomon's resume. God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding beyond measure and breadth of mind like the sand on the seashore so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. And people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of Solomon and from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. But in, in God's communication with Solomon, there were a couple of if clauses. If you'll walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, if you'll walk in my ways and statutes and obey my rules and keep all my commandments and walk in them, if you will walk before me with the integrity of heart and uprightness, then I will bless you with long life and I will establish your royal throne. But what the Bible tells us that after that, unfortunately, Solomon systematically and consistently disobeys God. And he goes against God's commands. 1 Kings 11, 1 through 3. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh. Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord has said to the people of Israel, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. So Solomon comes to the end of his life and he has his own refrain 
that sounds very much like I can get no satisfaction. It sounds like this, meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Solomon comes to the end of his life dejected because he couldn't find meaning and satisfaction in his disobedient life and sings the well-known refrain, everything is meaningless. It would be like taking his little lyre and singing, I can get no satisfaction. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. That's what I say. Remember, he was a singer-songwriter. Remember. I was not a worship arts major. <laughs> See, Solomon's perspective is from under the sun, S-U-N. And he says that in his book a lot. I saw under the sun, S-U-N. But he's trying to fill the void of his life with things from under the sun. The 17th century philosopher and physicist Blaise Pascal said, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the Creator. So Solomon looks in his void, in the void of his heart, and tries to fill that void with different things. Verse 2 of chapter 2 says, I said of laughter, it is mad. And I tried cheering myself with wine in verse 3. See, we learn that godless pleasures lead to unhappiness. When you try to fill the void of your heart with Anything else but God, it will not satisfy. He says, I'm going to try laughter first. Then he says, it is mad. And what, and of pleasure, what use is it? Imagine Solomon bringing all the comedians of that day, Jim Gaffigan, Brian Regan, Tim Hawkins. You know, they're good, and I have nothing against laughter. You know God has a sense of humor, right? Just look at the person next to you. God has nothing against humor. But listen, humor and laughter will not fulfill in a lasting way. Someone wise once said, life is no laughing matter. Some people laugh all the way to their grave, but there's nothing funny about the deathbed of someone who dies without Christ. He, he, he tries laughter and does not fulfill. He says, I'm going to try wine. I try cheering myself with, with wine. Can we find happiness and meaning at the bottom of a bottle. Solomon didn't find it. And I know you know people who tried that and didn't work. Why? Because apart from a correct relationship with God, everything will be meaningless. Apart from a correct relationship with God, laughter will be meaningless. Wine will be meaningless. As exemplified in the great theologian Billy Joel song, <laughs> Piano Man. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me making love to his tonic and gin. He says, son, can you play me a memory? It's not really sure how it goes, but it's sad and it's sweet and I know it's complete when I wore a younger man's clothes. La la la, dee dee da. <laughs> la la, dee dee da, da dum. Now John at the bar is a friend of mine. He gets me the drinks for free and he's quick with a joke or to light up your smoke, but there's something, some other place he'd rather be. He says, Bill, I believe this is killing me. As a smile ran away from his face, well, I'm sure that I could be a movie star if I could just get out of this place. Now, Paul is a real estate novelist who never had time for a wife, and he's talking to Davy, who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life. And the waitress is practicing politics as the businessman slowly gets stoned. Yes, they're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. The message is the same. The message is the same. Apart from a correct relationship with God, everything will be meaningless. You can try laughter. You can try wine. Though that didn't work, Solomon says, I'm going to try work. Verses 4 through 6, I made great works. I built houses. I planted vineyards for myself. I made myself gardens and parks and planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I made myself pools from which to water the forest of growing trees. And in verse 11, he will conclude, everything was meaningless and a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. You're pretty much guessing what he's saying, right? I can get no 
satisfaction. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. That's what I say. After winning a couple of Super Bowls, Tom Brady was asked if there's something greater out there for him. He actually asked himself, why do I have these Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, maybe a lot of people say, hey man, this is what is. I mean, this isn't. This can't be what it's all cracked up to be. When the interviewer asked him, what's the answer? Brady could only say, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Why? Because apart from a correct relationship with God, everything will be meaningless. Laughter, work, wine, fame. Solomon says, okay, I'm going to try something else. All these things didn't work. I'm going to try women. Maybe women will fill the void of my life. Verse 8, I amass silver and gold for myself and a harem as well, the delights of the heart of men. But he quickly learns that godless relationships lead to bitterness. We read, we read earlier he had a thousand women, and none of them brought him lasting satisfaction. It's interesting that later in, the, in Ecclesiastes, in chapter 7, 25, he will write this. I find more bitter than death is the woman who is a snare. Guys, don't write that on your Valentine's Day card. <laughs> that, that will not work. What happened to Solomon? Listen, in Proverbs, you know what he writes in Proverbs? In Proverbs he writes, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And now he says that more bitter than death is the woman. What happened? You know what happened? A thousand women happened. That's what happened. <laughs> because apart from a correct relationship with God, godless relationships would only lead to bitterness. You can imagine Solomon sitting down and singing, I can't get no satisfaction. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. That's what I say. The great American novelist Ernest Hemingway was married four times and was involved in plenty other romantic relationships and dalliances. He went to bull, bullfight Spain in, uh, bullfights in Spain. He sipped champagne in Paris. He went lion hunting in the Serengeti. He went fishing in the Florida Keys. And you think he would find satisfaction, right? He didn't. In 1961, he wrote a little note that read, life is just one thing after another. Then he pulled the trigger, the trigger of a double barrel shotgun and emptied it right into his head. Why? Because apart from a correct relationship with God, everything is meaningless. Do not try to fill the void in your heart that can only be filled by God with something else. It will not work. Because our perspective cannot be from under the sun, S-U-N. Our perspective needs to be from under the sun, S-O-N. See, Blaise Pascal's full quote was this. There is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the Creator, made known through Jesus Christ. So for us, the only way we can get lasting meaning and satisfaction is through the right relationship with a person known as Jesus Christ. He teaches us the right perspective towards relationships. When Jesus is asked about this very important topic, he actually goes back to the book of Genesis. It's actually in the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. A man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. What Jesus does, he quotes from the book of Genesis. Because we have to go back to the design to understand what God's design is when it comes to relationships. And the Bible clearly says that what God's plan for us is, is a man and a woman in a covenant relationship in marriage. That's God's design. It is not a man and a thousand women. It is not a man and a man. It is not a woman and a woman. It is a man and a woman in a covenant relationship through Jesus Christ. We have to get back from our perspective being from under the sun, S-O-N. Not just regarding relationships, but also regarding work. 
Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for man. That needs to be from our perspective from under the, the sun. Jesus came to redeem us from the meaninglessness Solomon experienced. Jesus died so we can have meaning and satisfaction and fulfillment, both in relationships and in work. We lived four years in Birmingham, Alabama, and we loved it. And we fell in love with the country music. And I know some of you know this song. It went something like this. Take this job and... Oh, you guys know it. <laughs> Take this job and shove it. I am working here no more. My woman done left and took all the reason I was working for. You better not try to stand in my way as I'm walking out the door. Take this job and shove it. I am working here no more. Imagine what would happen if you changed your tune and instead of singing that, you would sing, take this job and love it. How will things change in your job if you change your perspective? See, the song's perspective is only from under the sun, S-U-N. As believers, our perspective needs to be from under the sun, S-O-N. And it is when we follow Jesus and his word, we find meaning and satisfaction in relationships, in work, in everything that we, we do. Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it, how? Abundantly. That is our motto, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not, I can get no satisfaction. Our motto, this one is to be our motto. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and he came to give us life abundant. Someone wise once said, let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. What song are you singing? What song are you, sing are you gonna sing at the end of your journey? Are you gonna sing, I can get no satisfaction? Are you gonna sing, la la la, diddy dum? Or will you join the song of the redeemed and sing with all of us, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily leave, live. And I pray that this will be your song. I surrender all. I surrender all. Would you sing with me as we as I try to close this afternoon. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Good afternoon, graduates and special guests. I'm Dr. Freddy Cardoza. I serve as the Dean of the School of Ministry Studies and of Grace Theological Seminary. Romans 13 verse seven tells us to give honor to whom honor is due. And that is what today is all about. All those who graduate today are worthy of the recognition, 
honor, and celebration that is a part of these commencement exercises. At this time, however, we want to give special recognition to those who have earned academic honors in the course of your studies. Not only have you completed a college degree, which in itself is noble and a formidable task, but you have done so with a consistently high standard of academic excellence. And on behalf of Grace Faculty, I commend you for this noteworthy accomplishment. Today's honor students are wearing gold honors cords. You may see them around their necks. They indicate that they are graduating with distinction, this due to their outstanding academic performance. Now I will recognize several groups as a part of our honors graduates. As I announce each category of honors, I ask those graduating with that distinction to stand and be congratulated with our applause. Associate degree students who are graduating with honors have achieved a grade point average between 3.65 and 4.0 out of a possible 4.0. I would like to ask these graduates now to stand. Congratulations, please be seated. The undergraduate students who are graduating cum laude have earned a grade point average between 3.650 and 3.799 out of 4.0. I ask these graduates to now stand. Please be seated. Undergraduate students graduating magna cum laude have a grade point average between 3.8 and 3.939 out of a possible 4.0. I ask these graduates to please now stand. Congratulations, please be seated. Undergrad students who are graduating summa cum laude with highest honors have earned a grade point average between 3.940 and 4.0. Remarkable. If you are graduating summa cum laude, please stand as we acknowledge this grand accomplishment. Congratulations. Finally, graduate students who are graduating with honors as those who have achieved a grade point average between 3.75 and 4.0 in their graduate studies at the graduate level, let me please ask those graduates to stand and join me acknowledging their accomplishment. You may be seated. Congratulations. Congratulations to each of you graduating with these distinctions. At this time, we'll begin the process of presenting candidates for the degrees and conferring degrees to all of our graduates. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. So mom and dad, grandma, get the camera ready. Maybe a couple tissues. Are we ready? Candidates for Grace College and Grace Theological Seminary degrees, please stand. Dr. T. Van, on behalf of the faculty of the college and in accord with the authority granted by the Board of Trustees, I wish to present the following students who have successfully completed courses at Grace College and Theological Seminary, or who will complete them by August 21, 2022. As candidates for degrees, students will come to the stage by school and degree. The names of graduates from each program will be read by a professor from each school, and undergraduate tassels will be turned by the academic deans. Thank you. 
by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Grace College and Seminary as authorized by the laws of the State of Indiana and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon the candidates now being presented by the Vice President of Academic Affairs their respective degrees with all rights, privileges, honors, and marks of distinctions thereto appertaining, in token of which I award the diploma and direct that each master's and doctoral degree candidate be invested with the hood which is emblematic of their degree. Dr. So, Teven, I present the following students, 2022 graduates from the School of Arts and Sciences nursing program. These are students who have taken classes on the Grace campus, but received their diplomas from Bethel University, our partner in providing nursing education. Because we consider these students part of our Grace family, it is our honor to recognize their accomplishments in today's ceremony. Their names will be read by Professor Shibli Johnson. Tassels will be turned by Dr. Mark Norris, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. Samantha R. Carmack. <laughs> Jessica Renee. Courage. <laughs> Brianna Wynn McIntosh. <laughs> Kaylee Nicole Miller. <laughs> Gina Renee Novotny. Heather Nicole Plastow. Lydia Roslyn Thompson. Dr. Teven, I present the following students, 2022 graduates from the School of Business. Names will be read by Professor Melissa Chappelle, Undergraduate tassels will be turned by Dr. Jeff Fawcett, Dean of the School of Business. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Tyler Warren Carey. <laughs> Elena Joanne Clark. <laughs> Samuel Thomas Erickson. Fabricio Galvin. <laughs> Olivia Gabrielle Pearson. <laughs> Abigail Marie Corals. <laughs> Maximiliano Rosas Alvanante. Emily Eileen Albright. Jake Allen Anders. Ryler Trace Barker. Matthias Breeze. Elizabeth Camden Brooks. <laughs> Caitlin Nicole Bros. <laughs> Jaden Orleana Cardoso. <laughs> Taylor Michelle Collins. Grant Myron Robert Cook. <laughs> Jama Ruth DeWitt. <laughs> Nathaniel Ray Doss. <laughs> Ray, 
Robert Dale Fisher. Elena Fry. Anna Grace Fry. Madison Joe Gibson. Joseph Allen Good. John William Green III. Christopher Griffin. Jacob Gordon Googie. Rebecca Grace Hawes. Anna Helen Cool. Ethan Nathaniel Marlowe. James Eric Matheson. Anthony C. McClyman. Alex Russell McHugh. Thomas David Meyer. Sarah Irene Peppel. Riley Alexis Salick. Shelby Alexis Smith. Kaylee Renee Stouffer. Keith Daniel Wortman. Michael James Worsing. Degrees for the candidate of Master of Business Administration, Elizabeth Ann Albu. <laughs> Maya Bowen. <laughs> Samuel Jonathan Bush. <laughs> Benjamin Lee Close. <laughs> Brianna Marie Drummond. Kirsten Maria Gillum. Nicholas David Graber. Jacob Thomas Gray. Jeremy Tyler Gross. Bethany J. Hoffman. Caleb Daniel Leak. Anna Mangus. Spencer Mark Mason. Ashlyn Marie Jennings Rata. Mark A. Shook. <laughs> Lindsay Rose Smith. <laughs> Noah Thomas Stacker. <laughs> Anna Espoir Stilly. Hi, Jacob Schwarzentruber. <laughs> Braden Douglas Allen Tadeo. <laughs> Theodore Joseph Varga III. <laughs> Hannah Kaled Wanamaker. 
Nora Robert Wright. Sorry, Noah Robert. Dr. T. Van, I present the following students, 2022 graduates from the School of Ministry Studies. Names will be read by Dr. Dr. Mark, Matt Harmon. Tassels will be turned by Dr. Frederick Cardoza, Dean of the School of Ministry Studies. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Joshua Constant. <laughs> Caleb Jack Gagline. Stasha Rose Hudak. Caroline Nicole Kitchen. Bailey Marie LaFollette. Matthew Kenneth Lingren. Joshua Antonio Marquez. Yeah. Elaine Madison Nichols. Yeah. Terrence Stone Nicholson. Yeah. Mackenzie Marie Nyes. Kennedy Grace Parker. <laughs> Josiah Benjamin Shank. <laughs> Noah Edward Sykes. <laughs> Candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science. Mariah Faith Berger. <laughs> Carrie Ann Kayanti. <laughs> Megan K. Gibson. <laughs> Hallie Nicole Crocta. Parker Snyder Lambert. Dr. T. Van, I present the following students, 2022 graduates from the School of Professional and Online Education. Names will be read by Pam Buca. Tassels will be turned by Dr. Tim Zebarth, Dean of the School of Professional and Online Education. Candidates for the degree Associate of Science, Emily Grace Banks. Sharu Amber Rose Converse. Joseph Daniel Ewing. Hope Elizabeth Harlow. Clayton Todd Hoffman. <laughs> Ashley Renee Hoskins. <laughs> Ren Howe. Andre John Jordan. <laughs> Benjamin Russell Nichols. Samuel Kemper Clayton Schnarr. Schnar. Karis Lynn Sigler. Nolani Renee Stahl. Abigail Nadine Stevens. 
Kathleen R. Amen. Riley Garrett Bothman. Madison Lynn Kokel. Laban Michael Irby. Casey Dakota Freeman. Scott Matthew Heiberger. Garrett Lee Hirsch. Olivia Claire Johnston. Luke Marcus Lambeth. Krista Elise Lennon. Elise. Lucas James Marks. Charles Walter Ominsky III. Lauren Ann Ominsky. Nathaniel G. Pavlovich. Samuel T. Pratter. Charity Chantrice Redis. Anthony M. Reed. Austin Thomas Shanauer. Jordan Christopher Schufelt. Rose Marie Summers. Annalise Marie Testa. Madison Mucklish Watts. Edward Joy J. Wolbert Jr. Morgan Kimberly Zebart. Paige Nicole Eekright. Olivia Claire Bottorf. Cozy M. Gusman, Cody. Sorry. Blake Allen Moore. Courtney Hope Thompson. Jacqueline Wynette Allen Jones. Samantha Renee Barba. Damon Bryce Binkley. Jody May Glickert. Savannah Ray John Ukin. Jonathan. Tracy Deneen Lewis. Peter Beck Nichols. Isaac Allen Peterson. Sawyer Allen Reynolds. Allison G. Sisson. Grace Catherine St. Clair. Carly Renee Sinsborn, Zenborn. Dr. Teven, I present the following students, 2022 graduates from Grace Theological Seminary. 
Names will be read by Dr. Matthew Harmon. Seminary graduates will be congratulated by Dr. Freddie Cardoza, Dean of the School of Ministry Studies. Doctoral students will be hooded by Stephen Park, Trent Lambert, and Dr. Rock LaJoya. Candidates for the degree Master of Arts. Michael W. Fuller, Sr. Katie Evelyn Hankins. Nicholas Andrew Hettinger. Georgina Funes Holm. Emma Kathleen Hood. Zachariah Wade Huffines. Sarah Elizabeth Prater. Candidates for the degree Master of Divinity, Andrew Clinton Cornelius. Lane Garrett Fallhaber. Kaylee Brooke Houghton. Malachi David Michael Cook. Zachary Tyler Olson. Jeffrey Dean Price. Kale Matthew Ryder. Richard James Snyder. Candidates for the degree Doctor of Intercultural Studies. Gu Jin David Young, dissertation title, Effective Christian Education in Islamic Indonesia, El Shaddai Mulia School in Sumatra. <laughs> Song Sik Kim, dissertation title, Effective Korean Missionary Teamwork in the Mindanao Area, Philippines. Kevin Paul Oberlin, dissertation title, Motivation, Knowledge, Strategy, and Execution, Coaching Expatriates for Personal and Professional Leadership. Van Lal Mal Salma, dissertation title, Reinterpreting Romans 13, 1 through 7 in Myanmar Christian Perspective. Well, congratulations once again to all of our graduates.
You know, I, I think I have robed up for about 50 graduations, which is, sounds impossible, except uh, during the uh, years of uh, the present extension here, I went to many graduations every year, led in uh, many of those. We would have Dr. Katip and others uh, come and join us from the campus. We had teachers from the campus. It was all very good. But we have not had a year like this year. We are post-COVID, and our leaders led us well. We are, we are uh, recognizing a difficult year. There are things in the culture. There are things in society. There are things that we see that are, are, are a challenge. So we know there is a, 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 a difficult climate as well as a hard year. We had, a, we had spikes of COVID even in January of this year. We're doing many things uh, by virtual connection. But the focus all along has been character, competence, and service with biblical values to honor Jesus Christ. Character, competence, values. You've lived in a different world. Your experience as graduates has been unique. We will look back on these days and hard to imagine what they will be like. And hard for me and my wife. These uh, six months, four months so far being interim president have been a time of, uh, of uh, great blessing, but also uh, some trials and seeing so many things uh, we're completely from God's hand. It has been a humbling experience. I want you to know that I have confidence in our future because I have confidence in God. I have confidence in what I see here at Grace College. I've been pleased to be connected for many years. And I'm also confident that uh, we will be well led by Dr. Drew Flam in the future. And I am very happy about that. But before we conclude our ceremony, I would like to invite Dr. Jeffrey Fawcett to the podium to share a final challenge to our graduates and lead us in a benediction and prayer. Dr. Fawcett is Dean of the School of Business and Professor of Business. Dr. Fawcett is completing his 11th year at Grace. Following the benediction, here are some instructions. Our brass will lead us in our recessional. Please remain in your seats, keeping the aisles clear until all the faculty and graduates have exited the arena. You may find your graduate and meet their faculty after the ceremony outside, in or near the large tent in the lower parking lot. God bless you all. Graduates. Doesn't that sound good? Graduates. As I look out over this group, one of the first thoughts that comes through my mind is actually a scene from the, the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where Indiana and his father are arguing over time spent together and his father says, you left just when you were becoming interesting. <laughs> this, <laughs> think about it, this happens to us every year just when we start having good conversations about our disciplines and life and how they're impacted by our faith. You graduate and leave us to a new wave of students who don't know where the dining hall is. I will just tell you, it can be exhausting, it can be exhausting. Actually, my biggest reaction when I look over a group like this is one of great anticipation. Uh, we call this commencement for a reason. Uh, this is the day that you launch out on your own to make your way in the big wide world. So what am I anticipating? Simply put, and I'll put this in business terms, ROI, return on investment. The business graduates should know what that means. Um, but for those of you who might not, it's the simplest way to explain the concept is to compare the total cost of an investment with the total amount of that's earned over its useful life, expressed normally as a percent. Um, so what are we looking for is a big positive number indicating a good return for your investment. In terms of the graduating class, the investment in you has been substantial. Uh, take a minute and, and think of all the people who have invested in you to make today happen. Is there one person in particular that comes to mind that made this day possible? Um, do, you have that, do you have that person in mind? Uh, let me challenge you, before today is over, make sure that you take the time to thank them personally in whatever way you can get a hold of them for their care for you and for their hopeful deposits into your life account. Here's just a few places you might look if, you're, if you don't have anybody in mind yet. Uh, your families, they most likely have poured into you longer than anyone else in preparation for higher education, financially, emotionally, an occasional care package, but more importantly, with prayer support. Your friends, their encouragement, their support, accountability, compassion, 
and sharing their snacks late at night when you were studying for something the next day. Um, our administrators and staff, th there is a countless number of hours of prayer, planning, and work that go into allowing you students and the faculty to interact in this environment, and the amount of those hours is staggering. Um, they have all invested heavily in you. Uh, your faculty, you would be hard-pressed to find a more dedicated and passionate group of educators anywhere. You'll never know the amount of deep soul-searching work that it takes to create what seems like a few fleeting moments to you in the classroom. It, it's not hours. It's actually years of work that go into creating courses that will challenge, train, and inspire students to embrace truth, big, big T, truth. And since all truth is God's truth, we work very hard to handle it carefully and faithfully. And don't forget yourself, you've made some deposits into your own account as well. Time, finances, mental and emotional effort, making life changes and conforming to the truth of God's word as you seek to prepare for the future <clears throat> that you now embrace. Uh, this is hard work for certain, and it takes a toll as you grow academically and spiritually, but the effort's worth the result. And then in the last but not least category, we can't forget the investment that God himself has made in your future. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Uh, God the Father made the ultimate investment in you and your future through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus promised to us, has been mentioned today already, but the outcome of his investment is so encouraging. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Isn't it great to have Jesus' personal guarantee about the outcomes of his investment in front of us? Today, the future that so many have sacrificially given to make happen is actually here. So how do you respond? How can you make sure that you provide an adequate rate of return on the investment for the deposits that have been made on your behalf? It's actually pretty simple. The first thing, follow Jesus and live in his truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And those who have invested in you want to be able to say with John, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. My question is, what will your social media indicate about you in five years? Second, treat your work as worship. Uh, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do, it says in Ephesians. As followers of Jesus, our work is to serve others and bless those around us using our God-given gifts and talents. And when you count your work as worship to the Lord, you have the abundant life that he promised in John 10, and you'll be investing your treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and thieves do not break in and steal. Finally, pay it forward. This is actually the result of the first two things, following Jesus closely and serving others will result in you investing in heaven. Making those deposits comes in the form of you teaching others what we, have, what we have taken so much care to try to teach you, or as Timothy said it, entrusting to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. The result is a life measured not by income, but in the lives impacted through your faithfulness. So my great anticipation as I look out over this group is for each of you to follow Jesus, treat your work as worship, and to invest in the flourishing of others. That would be the best return on our investment that we could ask for. As I pray, remain standing um, at your seat through the recessional. Please, let's, let's pray. Our Father, we come to you with our hearts full of praise and thanksgiving today. We praise you for providing for us through this academic year and allowing us to complete our task during trying times. We're thankful for every student in this graduating class, for the talents and the gifts that you've given to them, and for the way that they have diligently worked in preparation for the future that you've called them to. 
We pray that as they leave these halls of learning and transition into serving others in the world, that they would keep your ways foremost in their minds. We ask that your spirit would guide them as they seek to serve you and bless those that you place around them. Bless them as they represent you in the marketplace. Give them the strength to stand firm in their faith, not wavering or conforming to the, conforming to the ways of the world. Father, we pray that you would hold them close. We ask these things in the precious name of, our, of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 